Future generations are important for more ways than one. But how is the print industry preparing for the next generation? In the heart of London, there is a traditional printer doing the simple things well. But if you look closely, there's more going on. They're exporting worldwide, using some of the latest innovations in marketing and print technology. They have an agenda to help and develop the next generation for the print and marketing industry. Let's find out more in today's episode of The Print Pod. People Power with Effie Berman. Paul, thank you for coming out of London to see, to see us down here in Leafy Sussex. Yes. Um, elephant in the room, um, first of all. You must be the nicest Millwall fan I've ever met. Probably the only one. Well, actually not, no, unfortunately, being a Pompey fan. But oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're probably the nicest one I've ever met. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you like cricket as well. I love cricket. And yeah. um, I went to see Portsmouth. Uh, I, I supported Portsmouth once. Mm. Big time, like proper big time. Yeah. yeah. Because I went to the FA Cup final against Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. I think we lost, didn't we? You did, unfortunately. Mm. But I was very, very pro Portsmouth. I'm mm. very pro people supporting their team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm, so uh, love that. you might have issues with my team. I don't actually. Right. I like the fans, but, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're passionate. <laughs> so someone does <laughs> like us, and we yeah. don't care. But um, yeah, fair enough. No, so I'm, I'm I like the Portsmouths in this world. Hopefully, we'll get one after they play each other in the in the, in the championship this year because we've come up. I know so you have. We'll, no, it's brilliant. Isn't we'll it? get one. Oxford came up, didn't they as well? I think so. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, isn't it? Oh well, it's good. You deserve to be where you are. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. That's right. There you go. Um, I, am the mil- I am the nicest Millwall. You are. You are. No yeah. one will ever say. Yeah. That. So we saw you um, at the customer event last year at the Oval. Yes. Uh, Automate Print. Um, that was really good. I spent some time with yourself and Roger, and um, just we just had to have a conversation with you guys. We, what you guys are doing is is fantastic. I feel it's a little bit under the radar. So let's cycle right back. Tell us a bit about yourself first of all. Um, how you ended up in the uh, hot seat? <laughs> um, so in 1982, yeah, as a kid at school in Bermondsey, SE1, yeah, and I really struggled at school, um, very dyslexic, but grew up with parents who were very, very easygoing and accepted me as who I was. And my brother's very mm-hmm. academic, was probably the only, well, he was the second kid who went to university from our school, he's a bit older than me, oh, yeah, okay, and very different. But um, I was um, I was always into photography and stuff. My dad was in the printing industry and into photography. And um, in 1982, I managed to get an apprenticeship. Wow. And it was amazing. I was so grateful. At F.E. Berman. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there you go, right? That's a long, long, long wow. time. So, okay. So, yeah. that was 1982. That hmm. leads me on to my next question. How long has F.E. Berman been established? About 60 years. Wow. Okay. Hmm. That's amazing. Mm. It's worth saying, joint 1982, obviously that's 40 odd years, yeah. 42 yeah. years or something. Yeah, I'm 43, yeah. so yeah. yeah 42. Oh wow, look at that young <laughs> star. <laughs> um, never give away your age. <laughs> thank, thanks to people like Michael Berman yeah. that never restricted you from yeah. doing what you desired. Yeah. I've been to 58 countries. Okay. Right. So I've backpacked places. Yeah. I've had four months off unpaid leave, leave, paid and unpaid leave. I was never restricted. Okay. And the technology always came along. Right. So I was always learning. Yeah. So yeah, so all that time ago, I joined F.E. Burmes as an apprentice. Okay. Um, and I'm still there. Yeah. But considering my background and my tough time at school is probably why I have this absolute passion of helping young people come yeah. into the industry. Okay, hold that for. Hold that thought. We'll come on to that in a minute. So you said Michael encouraged this kind of journey. Unbelievable. So that's probably the first part. Um, We're hearing like a reoccurring theme actually um, in here with people that didn't necessarily finish school or go to university, but actually end up in very high places, doing good things for for the print industry. And it just goes to show that you shouldn't be written off at the age of 16 if you don't follow national curriculum. No. No. No, not at all. And to be honest with you, um, I've got three kids myself. Um, all went to state school. My son ended up, and I, I very rarely say this, but I'm going to. My son ended up at Jesus College, Cambridge, doing history and politics. Wow. And as a parent, you're absolutely like wow. thrilled. Yeah. I am more thrilled 
and I got more emotionally upset when my daughter told me she was doing an art foundation in Kingston. Wow. And now she's going to Glasgow School of Art to wow. do product design. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. I am more thrilled. Yeah. I, you know, if Harry was here, he, he, he'll hear it, my son. Yeah. But it's incredible yeah. to have uh, someone who I knew was creative, who was yeah. going down the path of yeah. university, doing e- economics or something. Yeah. And then she just went, you know what, I want to do an art foundation. Mm. And it just fits her. And it just fits the way she is and the way she view things. And, yeah. you know, she's just that type of character. So... Um, yeah, I think there is a place for everyone. Mm. And I think um, we need to be much more open and, and, and caring towards the kids that don't fit into the box. Okay. Um, we're going to come on to that because that's a huge theme in, in today's session with you guys. Let's talk a bit more about day-to-day of, of the business. So um, in South London, yep. um, you have a plethora of customers ranging from all kinds of sectors sizes international as well yeah a few yeah yeah, yeah. um a key hp indigo partner as well um possibly the very first to get an indigo in the uk wow it's a slight conversation about that i think yeah um if not one of the first yeah it's the first or the second yeah, i think yeah um we were um, so a couple of things when they sold those indigos in those days you had to buy two they wouldn't sell you one. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's <laughs> because in those days, if that one didn't work, that one will. When that one didn't work, that one will. But they really did want to sell you two. And Michael said, well, I'm not buying two. Mm. I'm buying one. Mm. And and it was um, it was an amazing press. So mm. we've come from pre-press. We've come from repro. We weren't printers mm. at all. Mm. We did proofing on wet presses. Right. So we knew about colour, we knew about files. Mm. We knew about files when film existed, mm-hmm. when scanning to film existed, mm-hmm. uh, analogue cameras, transparencies, bromides, etc., chemistry, light boxes. Wow. Yeah, no, of course, that's my background. Right? Yeah. So yeah. we knew how to break all these things down. Yeah. And then we knew how to, you know, Photoshop came along and Adobe came along and Quark. So we, we got to know all that as well. But then PDFs came along and it's like, oh, what's going to happen next? <laughs> yeah. Clients can do everything themselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's when we got into print. We realised that we could actually get into print. So we bought an Indigo. Mm-hmm. And it was fascinating. So you could print one. You could print lots, all different. Or you could print medium runs, short runs. And you could do it really quick and they're dry. Mm-hmm. But the quality wasn't that good. Right. So where the bright, big old bright red... <laughs> Where, where the big bright red face appeared on the print, mm. thought this ain't right. Mm. But because of the pre-press skills, you'd go back into Photoshop, take magenta and yellow down and, and make the press run well. Mm-hmm. And it was a fight. You know, there's banding, there's everything. And it took a long time before mm-hmm. the generations of presses we bought mm-hmm. finally became that absolute Rolls Royce mm. that could compete against the litho presses mm-hmm. and beyond. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is a problem I always have that um, I feel Indigo set a mission, HP Indigo set a mission out to match Litho. Mm-hmm. They got beyond that, but never shouted about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite interesting. Yeah. 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 Because what they wanted to do was be able to match offset Litho around the world mm-hmm. for a brand. Mm-hmm. What they didn't do mm. was say, you know what, on uncoated papers, that colour gamut it's bigger. Mm. You know? mm. So don't send files into us as CMYK files. Mm. And you've already converted into the LIFO world. Mm. Send files is in RGB, mm. and we will utilize the press. Mm. And even to this day, people actually are not registering mm. our, how good it is. How good it is, honestly, yeah, they're not. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good to hear. And it's nice to hear as well that you've been through the whole process, and you know, and the fact that Michael stayed strong, made one work well. Unbelievable, really. Yeah, yeah. What a case study for them. Yeah, and he and he's he's always you know people talk about Michael as one of the first, and you know, and prior to that we were part of a whole Cytex world. Cytex was the planning systems, mm-hmm. the systems that took you know the analog into the, like the digital platforms, mm-hmm. and uh, that's a big Israeli company as well. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think it might still be going, and they're all in the same areas. 
and a lot of the people I think from that went from Cytex into the Indigos okay and so on and so forth yeah but, yeah and then I mean obviously that relationship we see is, is strong you guys host events and do different things for HP yeah, yeah, at different yeah. times and um, that's exciting uh, I met you in, in a D-Scoop event I can't remember which one Dublin is it Dublin might have been. that's why you can't remember yeah so you it, might have been. The Guinness well, it might have been Doug or Greg you in Dublin oh okay yeah because I wouldn't have been at Dublin I think okay. my first was in um, I don't know I can't remember where was you in some Petersburg or somewhere no where was I I, I think it was either Portsmouth <laughs> yeah probably um, it was either Florida or it was um, Leon or somewhere Leon. like that Leon it was Leon. Florida yeah Leon yeah um, and I found Addy was there yourself was there yeah, I and I so. think I think Roger was there I can't remember but the three of you just seem to have this kind of energy that you you, you want to pull the business and, and the industry forward and yeah. you're kind of very relentless with that that kind of approach it, it's really it's really nice it's really refreshing um, and even in probably not on the timeline that you'd like it to move on but you keep going at it you keep going at it and it's yeah, we do. Um, firstly, it's worth saying that there's, there's, there's a problem with Addy and Roger. They haven't been there that long. Addy's only been there, I think, 37 years. Oh, only. And Roger's yeah. only been there about 30 years. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, they're yeah. relatively new yeah. covers. <laughs> so I have a slight issue with that. But, uh, <laughs> it's too impressive. But a couple of things. First, Firstly, um, we are all good mates, actually. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, yeah. Roger and I have a lot in common because we grew up in the same area yep. in rough old Bermondsey. And he's different from where he grew up. He he, he came over to boarding school and uh, so on and so forth. And he was always my manager. Was he? And I was, you know, the apprentice, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So Addy used to give me jobs and sort of ask me to do things. How times have changed. Like, yeah, no, we're all... Well, and to be honest, every <laughs> Bermondsey, everyone's equal anyway. Yeah. There's, there's no hierarchy. Right, you know, okay. Michael's very hands-on every day. He gets... Gets in every morning early, finishes late, then he's the solid bedrock. Um, but but yeah, so having those two guys together, yeah, and especially Roger now has come on board. Roger's Roger's got a solid approach. Yeah, yeah, Roger, especially yeah. with the Infigo and the Web to Pre, yeah, and all the stuff, yeah, that I sort of just go, yeah, yeah. Nah, I don't, I'm not interested in it. But that's that's and the point, though. That's yeah. the point, Paul, because you, your team as a PSP should be built where you have somebody that's leading the tech, somebody that's leading the creative, you're obviously yourself in the creative. Yeah. You should have one for, for, for every pillar of, of your business. And you're right, Roger's embraced not only web to print, but he looks at the next stage of the workflow. He looks at linking all the systems, the communications. Yeah. He's, he is at the front of everything. I, I love it. Um, we're very fortunate he lives close to the office yeah, no, it's, it's fortunate for us as well actually. and he pops in and we have a quick chat and you know we get his opinions on things and it, it's it's a, it's a really valuable resource to have yeah, a customer good. feeding in on, on the technical sides um, I, I think again that that just reinforces the point of having you here today that Effie Berman are thinking differently by making Roger uh, his new title is to be honest with you, I have no idea. He's technical creative director. I think titles. he's te technical creative director. So, something along those I lines. I think his yeah. title's Roger. Yeah, Roger. Roger. Just Roger. Just Roger, because yeah. he is just Roger. But no, I think he does carry a title. Yeah, but my, my point is it, it's a technical role. Yeah, very, very much so. And you've identified that that's something that needs to happen for the 21st century and oh. therefore the right man for the job. And actually, what he's put into the company over all these years... The absolute right man for the job. Yeah, yeah. It's a, there's a in in Effie Berman's there's there's it's a bit of a family, right? And yeah, Michael's yeah, very very yeah. Lo um, loyal, yeah, and fair to people that've been there a long time, and everyone's been there quite a while. Not everyone, but you know, so that so there is there is that element. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but he's definitely technical. Yeah. He thinks outside the box. Yeah. He's enthusiastic. Yeah. You know, but then Addy's keeping Addy keeps up with everything, so yeah. Addy's a bedrock with 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 that side. I'm just a little bit out of yeah that side. Okay. This whole web to print, yeah, uh, uh, workflows, etc., etc. Yeah, I'm not as naive as I'm sounding. No, I, you're not. I, and I think I think also again, you know, you have a different role to play at the moment, which I'd like yeah. to open up a bit now. Yeah. Let's before we talk about the education side, let's talk about the substrates and the, the partners you work with, because you're also a bit of a champion there as well, aren't you? Yeah. We're really lucky because we work with um 
we're very close to the paper companies, mm -hmm. but we're very close to the creative paper companies. I always said to the paper companies, please don't send someone in with a flash car and a suit on trying to sell us white paper. Mm -hmm. Please send in your back sellers. A back seller is someone that goes out to all the creative agencies, works for the companies like GF Smith, uh, Fedragoni, Fenner, and uh, was our Joe Wiggins and Talis. Not so much now, but also then. Mm -hmm. And they go out just merely talking about passion of paper, showing samples of new papers coming out. Right. And how important paper is and materials are. Mm -hmm. And we work with Winters on the material front. Um, and, and going in with them and having that approach has, has created uh, people's idea that F.E. Berman's is on the side of the creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we mix with those those mm -hmm. same people. You that's, know. How it, that's how it appears to me as well. Yeah, no, and it, it, it really is. And mm -hmm. we... We, we owe it a lot to some of these partners. Right? right, okay. You know, we we do because they're like we're like a big group of people just having a massive passion mm. of print mm. and materials. And paper is incredible. If you haven't got the right beautiful paper for a project, doing a project, say, for the V&A or BAFTA or, wow. or, or, or a student, the project will fail. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got the right design, the project will fail. If you haven't got the right processes, the project will mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. So paper's like one part of the triangle, and you've got to love it. Mm -hmm. You know, Too many people are not uh, utilising papers enough. It's always, well, we've got something on the shelf. <laughs> With HP um, at Indigo, they've got a huge variety of papers that are certified to go on their press. Mm -hmm. But there's... Thousands and thousands and thousands of papers that aren't certified that will go on their press. Right. And if they don't go on their press, they probably will go on their press. Mm -hmm. So having no restrictions on mm -hmm. materials mm -hmm. allows people to be really creative and think outside the box. Yeah. So I think that's key for us. Mm -hmm. We don't like to hold people back. We don't like to restrict people. So paper's really important. And white ink's important. Right, okay. Right. White ink's important. Why? Because you can print on any coloured paper. Mm. You can print on dark papers. Mm. Mm. Silver ink on the Indigo. Once they asked me to go and talk about the new silver ink. Yeah. And I, I actually said, I, I, I'm not going to talk about silver ink. And they said, well, why? I said, I'll talk about metallic ink. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I said to them, basically, the bottom line is, your silver ink gives me all the metallics. So you put a bit of silver down, put a bit of yellow on top. Out of the CMYK, those colours on top. You will get a metallic gold. Yeah. You will get a metallic bronze. You will get a metallic magenta. Mm -hmm. So I spoke about this press has all of a sudden changed overnight because mm -hmm. of silver ink. Mm -hmm. You know, silver ink's great. You know, it works on darker substrate. It mm -hmm. works on different papers. Mm -hmm. One side of the world wants it to be shiny yeah. and glossy. The other side of the world wants it to be natural and dull. Yeah. So it's it's enhancing these amazing things coming along, yeah. along with the papers. So yeah, yeah paper's really important. I pick up two things there from what you've just said. Um, first of all, different options for different scenarios. It's not one size fits all of you. No, approaches. And second of all, you compared the V&A, um, BAFTA, and um, I think it was BAFTA, you said. Yeah, I did, yeah, and, yeah. and a student, and a student. project. And, it, and you like a level playing field in terms of it doesn't matter what the job is. It gets They're the all creative, yeah. Yeah, I love They're that. Great. What's really funny, actually, you, 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 um, the student might end up working for someone. <clears throat> uh, let's say a big brand so right. I walk into a big brand I've been invited to go and see I don't know why someone's asked us or me to come and see them and you go in and you go and see them talk about a creative project and over in the corners some youngsters looking at you think I recognise that youngster <laughs> but they're one of like 300 <laughs> youngsters that's yeah. walked in the building in yeah. the last year Yeah. and then you then you register and you find out that youngster has said oh I was somewhere this is weird you know, mm. it's quite incredible right? mm. that poor youngster now has gone from being completely free, free with their design and their creativity to now being completely blocked <laughs> with brand rules. Yeah, right? yeah, brand police. Yeah, brand police. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's uh, so what we don't want to do then is make it even worse and say, yeah. oh, you can only use these papers. You only do no, this, you only do yeah, that. So yeah. those, those uh, youngsters are flying around. That, the that's the refreshing approach. That's a lovely segue into the, probably the, a major topic for, for us today. Mm. Um, I became very aware of what you do in terms of your education 
um, policies at and what, what you guys invest in the industry. Um, in Figo have an onboarding process and as part of that process we send new starters to, to your... We your, get the pleasure of your new starters. You do, you yeah, do, yeah. you do. Would you like to sort of share... Um, um, what the experience is when they, when they turn up on, on day uh, fi- one. Uh, in Figo, new starters, in right? In Figo, Although new starters. not all new starters. Well, I mean, I think you we're, we're backfilling. Odds, you, we're yeah, backfilling. You threw we? an odd... F- the, the head of finance in or something the other day. Well, she was a new starter. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. she was a new starter, so she had to come to FE Birmingham. But did come with someone that was a less of a new starter <laughs> and someone else. And anyway, look, yes. the, the bottom yes. line is you send people to us and yes. it's good fun, right? Right. And they have a mixture of me. Do they behave? They behave. Yes. Okay. They do. The thing. In case the boss is listening. Yeah. They, 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 if he's listening, they behave really, really well. Okay. They're really lovely, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, they come along and they have a mixture of me mm-hmm. and Roger. Right. So, Roger will talk to them about how Infigo works with FE Bermans and mm-hmm. so on and mm-hmm. how it could in the future and what we're trying to do. Yeah. I talk to them about printing plates. Yeah. About digital presses, yeah. the differences, how it's changed things, about utilizing people will call it mosaic and collage, but we 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 can, you know, we can code stuff and we mm-hmm. use mm-hmm. a spark and we use all these. Bottom line is I talk to them about trying to create each printed sheet to be slightly different. Because right? you can. Mm-hmm. And if I look at a project sometimes coming off the press, Roger's really good at it as well. If he picks up the artwork. But I see a project coming off the press and I think, you know something? Why are they all the same? Mm. Do, do they not realise that yeah. they could have just moved something around slightly? That you know, mm. it, it wouldn't take much. There's wrapping paper; it's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. They only have to take a background colour and swap it out. Mm. They could have something slightly different, or a name or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, I talked to your Infigo um, colleagues about uh, utilising uniqueness, and why can we do that now? Because of digital presses, why you know, and so on and so forth. So artworking isn't, um, and generating the artwork isn't making a PDF, making a PDF, mm-hmm. making a PDF. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of conversation about what what what, what the potential is, mm-hmm. and most of the potential is hasn't been um, used yet. I talk to them about projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, I explain the projects. Um, I show them some very simple stuff. You know, simply sheets of paper folded and gathered together. Mm-hmm. In a newspaper style, but visually, yeah. they're making noise. They're, they're yeah. great, yeah. right? They're really, yeah. really good. You know, you fold them up, do what you like with them. Yeah. I show them really lovely, beautiful foiling. We show them all the printing machines. Nice. We go through it. We show them the characters. Yeah. If anyone's ever been on a bus in London, we go down to Paul. He, they shout out the number bus and he tells them where it starts and where it finishes. Right. He knows every bus route in London. Right. Right? Wow. So we wow. just have a laugh as well. Yeah. Uh, and it is quite hilarious, really. But um, what what they do, I think, when they leave, they realise that the printing industry is a pretty cool industry. Mm. And what gets produced is mm. amazing. Mm. You know, I also talk to them about, have a look around and have a look what's printed. Mm. From your keyboard to your, mm. you know, your, your tube of toothpaste. Everything, yeah. Everything's mm. printed. Mm. You know, it's, it's and, and I think, I hope, well, I know, they go away thinking, this is a lot more interesting than we ever thought it would be. Yeah. You yeah. Know, we, we, we get this and they probably walk around with their eyes open more. Yeah. And I think also you kind of highlight the need for creativity and technology together. Really, with yeah. That approach, 100%. So, which yeah. Is what was- Especially with the coding and the algorithms and, 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 and creating unique print. Yeah. So really what my aim is to either you know, take something that's lovely mm-hmm. and try to make it unique every time... Or literally make something so tactile and lovely, foiled, die cut, you know, printed, mm-hmm. um, that when you get it, mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 just the most lovely thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, we have lots of environmental conversations. Okay. And I put stuff in front okay. of Love that. people. Yeah. And I say, especially the students, we get yeah. a lot, a lot of students yeah. coming in. So I will put something in front of them. And there's a particular book we did years ago for Puma. And uh, it was relaunching the Puma Trainers, Mm -hmm. the classic suede suede ones. And the book's all about the music at the time and everyone break dancing. And I say they used to take a bit of um, kitchen lino with them, the break dancers, Mm -hmm. and a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, right, yeah. One, to save their heads Mm -hmm. when they're dancing, Mm -hmm. and second, to buff their trainers up. Mm -hmm. And there was only 100 Puma books for the press, a big press launch. The covers have got kitchen lino. 
mm-hmm. right? And on the spine's a toothbrush, mm-hmm. right? So they can see how, mm-hmm. and, and I say that kitchen lino, it's, it will, if it was on the floor, it'll last forever. Mm. How environmentally friendly is this book? Mm. And they all say it can't be because you'll never be able to recycle the kitchen lino. And I said, okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. What, if, I, if I gave you this book, there's only 100. If I mm. gave you this book, what would you do with it? I'll keep it. Mm. So it's, That's uh, the end of that one then, isn't it? And I think it is. I think also you probably, it's probably reuse kitchen liner anyway and reuse. Yeah, we've just done yeah. a job on um, beaches in Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, photographer was a British photographer, Italian art director, photographed beaches in Italy. And it was brilliant, but it weren't glamorous. All shapes of people, all burnt, all not burnt, a <laughs> mixture of everyone <laughs> eating fish and chips on the beach. Yes, yeah. the Italians. Um, they actually went to the local place that reupholstered the deck chairs in this fabric that's just, you know. Lovely. And they got all the old stuff. So every single book, 130 books, had a different bit of deck chair on them. Oh, we wow. couldn't even cut it. It was so tough. Wow. We had a cutter made on our platen and we whacked them out. And then we, we said to the client, we can't bind these. You're going to have to come in. And he literally got a bradle. And we set up a jig for him and he bradled them. And then and he could only do 30 at a time because his hands were like, just almost like mm. torn apart. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so we util- there is a lot of materials get used yeah. on projects that yeah. would have otherwise yeah. actually gone into landfill. What's your favourite project you worked on? My favourite project absolutely by far is a book we did for Georgina and Jake. Mm -hmm. Georgina was a student at Kingston University. Uh, Jake was a tutor. Georgina has had three kidney transplants up to date. One only recently. And her experience as a teenager going into Great Ormond Street was just fear. It was a lack of information from Mm. her. So she's put a book... They have put books together... The operation. So a child's got a little book. Mm. And it's great, you know, Teddy Bear going in the operation. Mm. And they've we've I printed a book from it and it's absolutely fantastic. And it's the passport book for uh, kidney transplant. Great Ormond Street, Glasgow, uh Evelyn Ward, I think is St. Thomas's, Nottingham, and we've been doing batches of them. And it's a book where there's really important information in there, you know name and address and it's mm-hmm. a little book like a passport but it's very thick yeah yeah there's little picture frames where you put all your friends pictures in there's a wheel where you spin it and how you're feeling on the day but then mm. there's machinery that you may have to use in the future mm-hmm. there's medication there's your daily foods mm-hmm. there's a picture of an elephant in there and it says uh, why is this elephant on this page? Mm. We don't know. We mm. thought put an elephant on the page. There's mirrored papers where mm. you've got W and R and O and then a, a mirror at the other side, you know. It's a book that kids are getting, they're going into transport. Mm-hmm. 14 to 18 year olds, full of information, but interactive. And the only way you could have done it by print it, mm. printing it, yeah. And they're trying to get sponsorship for each hospital. I see this book as potentially could go anywhere in the world, be mm. translated into mm-hmm. anything. Any hospital. Yeah. And it actually is uh, remarkable because you know whoever uses that, it's going to fill that in and it's going to be better once it's filled in. It's mm. going to be used forevermore of, of a reference. Mm. And it's going to be a friend to that poor person, person mm. who's going into it. Mm. So without a shadow of a doubt... Mm. That is my favourite book. Awesome. And I, I used to say what we love is doing creative projects and unique projects. Yeah, that's both. That's that's <laughs> that's just like yeah. meaningful. So yeah, yeah. that's wow. by far. And I'll send you one. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know anyone that actually wants to sponsor anything, they can sponsor like twenty books for the local hospital. Okay. So we'll um add something in the in the uh, bio. If you wish, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. you know you know yeah. it's about the kids, isn't it? Yeah, it is it's about the kids. kids. Allow us to interrupt this broadcast with a short ad break. Are you ready to take advantage of the next printing revolution? Access our white paper to find out how web to print has revolutionized the printing industry. Inside, we discuss the growing importance of print e-commerce and automation, whereby customers are increasingly seeking an Amazon-like experience, with businesses that can't provide this being left behind. 
So how do you take this one step further and put your customers in control? Access the white paper and find out how web to print is revolutionizing the printing industry, how customers can find your business online, how you can learn from Amazon's huge success, how to enable your print business to make money while you sleep, the way in which potential customers want to deal with your business has changed. Are you adapting to grow? Download it now at vigo.net forward slash white papers. You guys are pretty much um, rolling your sleeves up and developing the next generation, Trying aren't you? to, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to use this word, but basically the whole situation is an absolute shit show, mm -hmm. right? We're in a position where probably, I always say five years ago, but maybe a couple of years have gone since I said five years ago. So let's say five plus years ago, I would never have ever invited anyone in to the industry to work in our world. Why? Um, I felt it was going in the wrong direction. And mm. it wasn't, it just, what it, I, it wasn't been, it wasn't creative enough. It, the future wasn't there for them. Okay. I've completely changed my mind. I say five, it's probably eight years ago. Completely changed my mind. Pre COVID, Take COVID then, we're saying. Long prior yeah, to pre COVID. Yeah, yeah. A couple of reasons why I changed my mind. Uh, one is because uh, I see how excited all these students get. And I see how many of them come to me and go, can we do an intern? I see how many come, is there apprenticeship? It's vast. You know, someone might just want to learn book binding. Yeah. And the other thing, actually, is John Bailey at uh, Precision Proco is mm -hmm. telling me about his son, mm -hmm. who seems to be getting very involved in the printing industry. D-Scoop, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and D-Scoop. Mm -hmm. And I've got to realise, you know, the printing industry is now not just paper, ink, and all these things. The printing industry is, uh, you know, systems and coding tech. Yeah. and tech mm -hmm. and you guys, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's very naive of me to suggest for one minute that print and industry is uh, not a place for a young person to come into. Mm. In actual fact, it's a bloody exciting place. Mm. It's incredible. So I'm very pro now. Okay. Very, very, very Good pro. to know. Yes. But it's very, very hard. I hear a lot of stories where companies have brought in apprentices and then once they finish their apprenticeship, they've just left the industry. It's very hard to keep, keep them. Uh, you've got to keep them interested. Yeah. So you've got to get, it goes back to that conversation I think about um, does everyone need to go to university? Mm. You've got to get the right type of creative to come mm. into it that has a passion and mm. a love for it. Mm. Yeah. But there's a lot of hope. Mm. And uh, I think, you know, I think the apprenticeship schemes, everyone's pushing them and there needs to be more and more. We, we, we have a couple here. Um, Good. Been fantastic. Like you say, it's a, uh, Tech industry for us, more more tech into creative, which yeah. is which is important. Um, but tell me a bit more about the actual physical actions you guys are taking. So you you're a believer, you feel very strongly and passionate about it. Clearly, but I always see that there's, there's students coming into FE Berman. There's always yeah. So look, I can visit the colleges, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly they come into FE Burns. We're a 10 minute walk from Tower Bridge, mm -hmm. right? London Bridge on the doorstep, Elephant the Castle. It's easy for its people to come and see us. Mm -hmm. So, and we've got the London College of Communication mm -hmm. down the road, it used to be London College of Print where I went. We've got Central St. Martins, we've got Kingston, we've got Epsom, we've got a huge Ravensbourne, we've got a huge variety of uh, university creative colleges in London. Mm -hmm. And word gets around. So, the tutor will send me an email, I've got one recently, can I bring 30 kids in? They're not your kids half the time, but 30, yeah. So the answer is yes. When would you like to do it? And it's a fine balancing act actually, because we don't charge for it, mm. and it, it takes up a whole morning or a whole mm. afternoon for me. Mm. So the answer's always yes, but sometimes the word goes around a bit too much. <laughs> so you can find yourself uh, doing like, loads mm -hmm. and they all come at once mm. <laughs> so a group will appear there is no structure to it it's all just sit yourself around the tables uh, we've got a load of those old Macs you know the towers mm -hmm. I've got about, about 
14 alums. Okay. So I say, grab one of them and sit on them. So everyone's sitting around, around a big table. Um, and I go through um, projects. Um, uh, the way print is produced, whether it's offset or digital, foiling. I just go through the whole process mm -hmm. and bring lots of samples out. Mm -hmm. And we just talk about the processes. They're fascinating. No one's seen a, a, a print through an eyeglass. Mm -hmm. they're, they're blown away. I'll explain uh, dots as tennis balls. Right. And I'll ask them if you put a signed tennis ball and a yellow tennis ball on the wall next to each other over there and you walk over there, what do you get? Mm. You know, and eventually one puts her hand up and says a green ball. Mm. And you know, bigger yellow tennis ball, smaller signed tennis balls, you get mm. a yellowy green ball. Mm. And what happens if you put magenta and sign together and then blah 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 and so on and so on. And they're all thinking, you know, oh, okay, okay, and then you give them an eyeglass. Mm. And it's a wow. It's like they're they're blown away. Mm. And you have interaction with them as well. You you know, you have fun. And you ask questions like Who's the biggest painful client you can get? And then you answer it, a student. Because they all come to us at the end to do their end of year or an end yeah. of course work. Yeah. Yeah. And you're telling them to be totally creative. Yeah. Yet they want one book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they've got a budget and it mm. was wanted yesterday. Mm. But they come back all the time. And prior to them coming in, they probably would have considered going down the road to some copy shop. Mm. They're also, the London College of Print, which is now London College of Communication, mm -hmm. was going to shut their print department I don't know, five years ago. They can't, they can't get their work done in there. It's, it's just running all the time. So either the guys in there send them to us. So print is very much on the agenda at the colleges. Okay. That's you know? good to know. It's really good. It's really good. Mm. And they're fascinated by it. And if, if, you, get, if you go down the, uh, to the level of schools and you get, you know, I had a brilliant scenario in my daughter's school. The art teacher brought a group in, six formers. So, you know, I said, okay. And this happened quite regularly. I, th I think that, um, you know, he's left, so it tends to stop. But it would design a poster. So when you come in, you know, send them to me prior or bring on a USB stick, you know. So, uh, and you have this lovely sort of chat with all these young youngsters, 16, 15, yep. 14, whatever they are. Bright eyed and yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like, wow, oh, look at that. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. And then you've got to keep, keep them focused. And at the end, you walk up to the big end, you go, and their posters are all coming off. And then you take them upstairs, you throw them on the floor, one at a time. And there's like, you know, the combination of shyness or their screeches and they're all having a go at each other about each other's posters. Yeah. And Energy. They, and they, yeah, and then yeah. they take them away. Yeah. They cannot believe yeah. they've ended up with a poster. But I had a really brilliant scenario once where I said to these two girls, because this was my daughter's school as well, and I said, how do you get on with that deputy Ed? I said, she's, she's a tough cookie, that one. I said, she frightens the life out of everyone. And one of the girls was really laughing. But no, they were both really mm. laughing. And I said, like, you know, you must avoid her as much <laughs> as you can. And I went, why are you laughing? Yeah. And one girl went, it's her mum. Uh. <laughs> so, so I was, um, and it was just fun, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. students are great, very enthusiastic. What's really interesting now right, mm. is, depending on the course, depending on the college, you could end up with 30 students most of them from the UK. Right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where they're from. Absolutely doesn't. You could also end up with 30 students. No one's from the UK. Right. And the only reason why I'm telling you that is because all of a sudden you've got different groups. Mm -hmm. You've got the Italian and the Spaniards, yeah? Uh, willing to ask lots of questions. You've got the American who's willing to ask more questions. Right. And then you've got a group of Southeast Asians that have a mixture of, you know, s some cultures are frightened to ask the question. Yep. Frightened to commit their self. So now all of a sudden you're playing this whole balancing act of, right, how how ex how much of a Londoner can I be? How much of a, you yeah, know, yeah. how much fun can I install this yeah. in this? How can I do this? This is difficult, right? 
mm. then you try to you try to pull out much from them and you try to yeah. just and it's it's very difficult so it's getting more and more difficult for the tutors i would imagine training yeah mm. you then you then uh why are we in this a lot of people say yeah but you know get students in then you're going to see them later on and they're going to be in all the businesses so this isn't a bad idea mm. we've never taken that approach it does happen sometimes mm. you know you, you also talk to a lot of students that's going to get up and go mm. so, yeah, right. yeah yeah and yeah. i tell you gf smith did a really good job they've got a fantastic person called vanessa who's in charge of the students but she's also looking at how can we communicate with these students once they've gone back yep. to India or wherever in the world. Yeah. And Jeff Smith are very smart. We don't do any of this. We just talk to students. They say, can I do an inter? And I go, no. And they go, why? Right? And I say, one, because you just asked in front of another 10 students. <laughs> and secondly, we don't actually have the time yeah. to give you. And I'm so sorry. But what I do sometimes, I will say to the odd one that I can see is, really got something about them because they're hanging around and they're asking me more questions and you know they're almost hooked uh i say look you come in for a couple of weeks i'll spend a day with you talking to you about a project yeah i said you can go and photograph what you like in the area or pull in some of your illustrations or whatever you want or your graphics i say and we talk about papers and you've got to spend the first week creating your book yeah and the guys will help you and the second week we will then produce it and you can watch machine machine and then you can walk out the two box. But you've got to be independent. You've got my phone number if I'm out in the building. And you've got these guys, you've got me yeah. confident. So there are ways of... Yeah, you know, Yeah, it, yeah. so we, we, do, we do sort of give them mm. some assistance. Do you think... Do you think um, do you see a sort of a change in the industry with that approach in terms of embracing what Effie Berman do and trying to do something about the next generation? Or do you think we're still it's a bit slow to, to adopt this development approach I, th I think uh, the bigger organizations like bpfi and uh, the big big groups are doing their utmost to yeah. resolve this yeah but it all revolves around a toolkit mm -hmm. you know that they mm -hmm. can give to a printer yeah and say look it's a toolkit and that's great yeah yeah but like the type of work we do com compared to a lot of others our our um our educational um abilities is purely about passion yeah and about, I don't know how it's going to go today, but it, I know it's going to go all right. Yeah. Everyone's going to have a good time. And I'll, yeah. have, I'll have a group in the morning, group in the afternoon from the same college, yeah. and they get a different experience. So I think people are really trying very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, hopefully it's working. All, okay. all we can do is just bring them in to... Do your best. And just try and inspire them. Mm. And I, um, I, I, I see it like, you know, I, I'm a qualified cricket coach and with kids well it was always with uh, young kids and I like always hang around and see in the D teams mm -hmm. you can really inspire those kids to love cricket they mm -hmm. may not be the best at cricket yeah but they're the ones one day at uni or at work someone will say oh, I'm going to cricket and they go I want to play cricket mm -hmm. and they love it so you've got to install love yeah, yeah. rather than put pressure yeah. on anyone okay that's interesting what do you um, how do you see the industry panning out in the next 10 years uh, a lot of it's going to go in your direction, technical, technical yeah, right. of course, you know, uh, and 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 I, you know, I still get fascinated with things, and you know, people think, well, well that's that's not unusual. I've got I've got my son roaming around the the Stan countries, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and there's others. <laughs> Ten weeks, he's he's hanging out there. Yeah. And I've got a daughter who's 19 that's just come out of El Salvador, gone into Guatemala. Right? Wow. So I've got some nice little uh, concerns on my But they're out, wow. and it's brilliant. Yeah. They're both on this um, polar steps. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, when they update, you can see pictures of where they are. And, and I looked at it the other day because I haven't really been looking at it because, mm -hmm. you know, they phoned me up and all that. And I went to the end and it said, buy my book. And it's 40 quid voucher. And then. <laughs> Then they and, mm. and it's amazing, right? Mm. And they get a book, mm. and I'm almost thinking, I might buy them a book. Mm. I won't print it. No, but it's absolutely. No. But you brilliant. could. But I could. Yes, yes. I could. That's the uh, point. Yeah, I've got the yeah. technology. No, exactly. Where before it will be, you know, get mm. a good designer, mm. design the book, 
So you think that's the way um, things are going to go? People are going to have the foresight to understand how they can create that book in that scenario? They're going to understand more? Yeah, the I, think, they have. I think it's gone from <clears throat> sort of like the flyer type of yeah. bang, 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 bang. Like anything, now people are wanting to... Um, Technology's great, yeah? But they're wanting a little bit more out of it. Mm-hmm. And they want it a little bit more local. Sweet. And they want a bit more thought with the paper. Yeah. You know, people go on about paper. But a lot of the forests, if you buy sustainable paper, the forests are getting bigger because you're buying paper. They're putting yeah. more trees down. Mm-hmm. If you if you own the forest and you're selling it to a paper mill, you're not going to run out of trees, are you? No. So, you know, no. uh, you're we're, we're in a good place. But people want that stamp of approval. Yeah. People want choice. People yeah. want something. That, so mm-hmm. I see the tech stuff is, is just there, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah. But I also see the getting a better product out of the tech stuff. So I'm hoping that we can fit in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be a bit more. I'm not suggesting no one's, you know, I got pulled once and it was really good. A mate of mine who runs a big printing company. Uh, I was telling about how you know emotional you can feel about a print, and you know, it's, it, 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 unlike unlike the tech stuff. And he said, um, "Well, a couple of my girls were looking at one of the books, uh, you know, that was done through tech, uploading pictures, and uh, it brought tears to their eyes because it was so emotional. It was a family book, uh, and it, to me, and and he absolutely right." absolutely 100% right mm. so yeah so I know I go on about nice materials and tactile and you know thought process and time it's taken I know mm. I go on about that mm. but he was, he was he was bang on the money actually and I've never forgotten that so yeah it's it's um, the tech stuff's very very and we need to do more of it yeah right yeah and uh, but we need to keep we need to keep um, doing what we're doing uh, creating yeah you need, both. Yeah. you need both. Yeah, we do need both. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, finally, I guess, really, just I'll go back to the cricket. So your cricket coach, that's pretty pretty cool. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you where if, look, when my son was six, uh-huh. yeah, phoned up the Wimbledon Club local and someone basically said, dismissed him, he was too young, but never said, come back when he's seven. Yeah. So he went down the other club called yeah. the Spencer Club. Okay. In Wandsworth, yeah, and it was open, open arms, yeah. So then I got Harry and all his mates from the class down there. <laughs> so I took about eight kids down there, wow. And then it wasn't long before uh, anyone want to help, Rope yeah. Between. And you're in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Of course I want to help. Roll balls, little kids yeah, running yeah, around, yeah. Uh, and then it led on from there. Um, but absolutely brilliant environment. At the time, I haven't coached since before COVID. I, I carried on after my kids left the club, mm-hmm. but and I will go back, and we're affiliated to Surrey. Um, but you're looking at that point. I think there was five hundred girls and twelve hundred boys in the club. Wow, right. girls massive, strong. strong yeah. So it's definitely the biggest uh, mm. Colts section mm-hmm. in the country, which then puts it probably the biggest in the world. Mm. Right? And Impressive. it's it's fascinating, mm. uh, absolutely. Um, just brilliant and it's 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 about balls and rolling them and hitting them that's what it's about yeah, that is, and it's about yeah. trying to get the girls to smash the ball yeah. and trying to get the boys not to smash the ball <laughs> it's it's like, yeah. it's really f- and the boys stop to throw the don't throw the bat down when you're out and the girls <laughs> throw the bat down when you're out <laughs> i know i'm summarizing this and it certainly isn't like that overall yeah. and it really isn't yeah because yeah. you know you only have to look at what's changed over the last few mm, years and mm. I've got daughters mm. and you know and, and a son but um, what so what's good about that what's the best thing about that yeah go on these however many mates of Harry my mm. son um, I see him now and he sat stand and talk to me and mm. it actually doing things like that actually mm. connects you mm. so it's been really good mm. you know uh, yeah you know, and they come round for a barbecue. Harry invites them round, and uh, yeah, you know, you they remember you because, mm. and and if you go away with a big group like the dads and the kids, yeah, like we used yeah. to once a year, yeah, yeah, and it's everyone else's kids and yeah. yours, yeah, you're the one that can turn around them all and go, 
don't go near the river. Get yourself over there. Yeah. And all their dads are looking, thinking, yeah, well done, Paul. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's yeah. great. Kids are great, right? Yeah, important. It's, it's, it's really um, nice to hear that it's not just your own kids that you guys are sort of investing in, but you're thinking about the industry and everything else. Yeah, kids, so. yeah. I, 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 overall, kids need an opportunity, mm. don't they? Mm. And I was, I was very, very lucky, mm. you know. And I was very lucky being... I, I grew up, obviously, in the middle of, of just off the Old Kent Road, but my dad was a French polisher, mm. and my mum always said, um, uh, early days, never, it won't for long, but too poor, uh, no, what's the saying? Um, too poor to buy twice. So what that means is, mm. you buy something that's really good that's going to last forever. Mm. And I was, I was interviewed years ago about, why do I love all this creative print? Mm. My dad was a French polisher. My mum mm. only bought nice stuff. Mm. And, I grew, and my granddad wore a suit every day, mm. you know? Mm. So I sort of, I, I go to charity shops and buy things and I, I make them good or I give them, I give them away. Mm. I don't need them off. Mm. But I see a lot of stuff, old cricket bats, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, kids around Wandsworth, most of them go to public school. Yeah. yeah? They have a cricket bat every season. Yeah. The old one's perfectly good. Yeah. 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 Sand them down, put a bit of linseed oil, put a new thing on. And, and you got a good bat for someone. Nice, so. nice. And it's interesting, it's right at the beginning of the conversation, you explained about your sort of entry point into, into the industry and it all going to Michael. And it just seems yeah. like threads yeah. just carried on through with you, Roger yeah. and yeah. Addy as well. So uh, Roger was the same. I think Roger yeah. liked the car outside the front of the building right. and knocked on the door and Michael saw him right. and gave him the opportunity. Right. Addy kept, well, was at the London College of Print yeah. doing... Uh, I'm not sure what he studied. It wasn't just print. It was a lot of stuff Addy studied. Um, and I think in those days, Addy didn't quite just go and get the job like everyone else. Mm. But he met Michael. Mm. Addy told Michael how much hockey he played. Right. And, off, and, and now, 30 odd years later, Addy's yeah. telling him he probably didn't play so much hockey. But right. <laughs> no, but um, no. Yeah. Um, Michael's very, very... Um, broad and yeah. gives opportunities that's fantastic i think we should celebrate you know the longevity of fe birmingham and what you guys have done for the industry and what you guys are carrying on and everything and you know it's an example to us all i think so well m maybe i think we, yeah. we we look at others often yeah and i think it's just about you know being an open door mm. and uh you know there is one other thing actually michael michael's the only person in the area not to sell the building. Right, okay. Right, it's really worth knowing this, right. and I'll plug in for this one. Mm -hmm. So basically, everyone around has sold the building and this flats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got to have some uh, commercial underneath. Of course. None of them seem like much is happening. Mm -hmm. Michael was being offered absolutely ridiculous amounts of money mm -hmm. to sell the building. Mm -hmm. And basically, he told them all to bugger off. Mm -hmm. Where will I run my printing company? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're still there mm -hmm. and eventually he enabled a company mm -hmm. to buy the roof right and we're getting nine flats on the roof right. the whole building's being uh, uh, updated updated yeah, yeah, yeah. and what's quite it's, it's called like the print house and all around the building it's all very rustic all around the building will be a font set oh so very print relevant oh so yeah. Uh, it's yeah we're in a bit of a building side at the moment it's a bit depressing but yeah. give it two months we'll be back fully open running we've got a massive show space okay. and um, I don't care if people come and sit there for the day and don't even give yeah. us a job yeah. what I care about is there's lots of creative people around maybe we could come along next year and do a do a session yeah that'd be good let's finish yeah, of course show us around and, but yeah mm. thank you ever so much That's keep right. up the good work thank you very much and, um, and get, keep me educated on the tech we will try yeah please we will try I'm, I'm all ears I know more than I'm declaring but uh, okay yeah. thanks right. Paul thank you very much take mate. care mate cheers thank you for joining us today on the print pod if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and consider subscribing to make sure you get all the latest from the world of print and marketing Feel free to share what you would like to see in the next episode of The Print Pod in the comments below. For more behind the scenes content, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels in the links in the bio below.